Hey, welcome back to the channel and welcome to the next video in my series, Working in VR, where every episode I explore a different virtual reality application that lets you collaborate and work solo in a virtual environment. Today, we're looking at Immerse. This is personally my favorite. This is the one that I use on a daily basis. And we're gonna talk about some of the collaboration aspects, the solo working aspects, and everything that goes along with that. So let's jump into Immerse and take a look. All right, so before we jump into VR, I just wanted to mention that you will need to download an agent. You can just go to the Immerse site. If you go to this main page and scroll down a little bit, you can grab it for Mac, Windows, or Linux. And likewise, this is supported on a bunch of different headsets. So we have support for the Quest 2, the Quest Pro, HTC Vive Focus 3, and it says coming soon to the Pico 4, but it is now available on the Pico 4. So those are the headsets it's on right now. They're also working on uh, doing Steam VR compatibility, which will open it up to a whole bunch of wired headsets. But all you need to do is download that client, run it on your machine, and then there is a setup process you can go through. This is not a full tutorial on Immersed. If you wanna see that, let me know in the comment section but I just wanted to point this out before we get into some of the features. Okay, so here we are in Immersed and we are in one of the most basic rooms in Immersed. This one is just a 360 kind of space scene and there are 3D rendered rooms that I'll show you in a minute, but this is just a basic room. We're just kind of floating in space here. Now, as we connect to our computer, we're gonna see the physical displays that we have on that computer. This one, I have two physical displays here. And again, this works for Windows, Linux, or Mac. So I have two physical displays or two virtual displays that are shown to represent those physical displays. But unlike the physical displays, these I can make them bigger, I can make them smaller, I can push them away, I can bring them toward me, I can just move them off to the side. And you can see they're moving together because we are in the snap grid. Now there's zones above, to the left, to the bottom, to the right, and when something is snap together like this. When you move the center one, it moves them all. When you resize it, it resizes them all. But we're not locked to this. We can come in here, go to our settings, monitor control, and turn off the snap grid. Now again, this is not gonna be a tutorial on Immerse, but I just wanted to show you stuff that leads to the productivity aspect and lets us compare it to other uh, applications. So now that we turned off SnapGrid, we can move these wherever we want. We can make them bigger or smaller independently. We can move them both off to the side. They're not tied together anymore. So if we go and turn that SnapGrid back on, you'll see they just kind of snap back together. And then sometimes this doesn't work the first time, but okay, they're locked together and we can move them around. Now, because we're in VR, we're not tied to what we have in the real world or what we have physically have. I have two physical monitors on that computer, but in VR, we can create a virtual display that acts just like a physical one. All we do is hit that plus button. It created a new display for us. We can kind of drag that into place. And now I'll just open up a file explorer window and show you that we can treat that just like a physical monitor, even though it's not. These two are my physical displays. This one over here is a virtual display, but it acts just like another physical display. And we can go into our settings in Windows or on your Mac and go in and change these resolutions. So we're gonna set that to 1920 by 1080. And now you'll see when we drag this across, we have three displays that are 1920 by 1080 two physical ones and a virtual one. So that is one of a key aspect to more productivity in VR and especially in Immersed, giving you the control to move these displays wherever you want. Now, one challenge of working in VR is being able to see your keyboard and interact with things in the physical world from VR. Well, there is a way around that on both the Pico devices as well as the Quest devices. Now the Quest devices are able to track certain keyboards. So I have the Apple Magic Keyboard with the number pad here. 
And this is one of the trackable keyboards. So this is a virtual representation of my physical keyboard. It's tracking it exactly. In fact, if I move the keyboard in real life, you can see it's moving the virtual keyboard in VR. And then when I move my hands over it, it switches for a second and then shows me my hands in a pass-through on that keyboard so I can find the keys and start typing away. Now, if you don't like that, another option for the tracked keyboards is coming into settings again into the keyboards. Instead of opaque, we can switch it to key labels. And this does a pass-through, but overlays the labels of the keys on top of that. So now we can immediately see my hands on there and I can easily find those keys because the letters are overlaid on it. Now, if you have a Pico 4 or you don't have a keyboard that's trackable on the Quest, you can come back into settings and turn that tracking off and go to keyboard portal. Now, this is one that I did before. It's completely out of alignment and you'll see that this keyboard, uh, you can't see the keys on it because it's white, it's completely washed out. That's why the overlay works so well. But I'm gonna grab another keyboard here that does work well with this pass-through and put that down. And then I'm gonna redraw this so that it's centered with our, our new seating position. So I'm gonna click on redo here, draw a line at the bottom here and then drag it up, make it a little bit bigger hit confirm, and then just kind of recenter that. And now we have a pass through to our keyboard. If I move my hands down there, they go right on the keys. I can look at my screens, then easily look down for typing. And you might've seen my mouse over on the side. If I want to be able to interact with that, I can come in, quickly turn on a portal. And this one I had already set up, but you can move these portals around wherever you want. So now I can easily see my mouse there, close this down, and now I can easily reach my mouse. You can see my recorder over there and I can reach my keyboard, my mouse. You can set up other portals for other parts of the room. If you have things on your desk, you need to get to. So that is the basic productivity from a solo aspect. There's other aspects if you're co-working or collaborating that I'll get to in just a second. But one more thing I wanna show you about the solo working is you can change these rooms. Now there's 360 photo environments, like this one is, this is the Milky Way photo environment. But we can go into these fully uh, rendered environments as well. And I like this Lakeview Lodge at sunrise. So we're gonna go in there and you can see we are in this beautiful uh, room overlooking this lake this expansive room. So this is great if you have a very small office or even in like an RV or something, you get a, a real sense of space coming into a room like this. So now that I've talked about these solo aspects, I want to talk a little bit about the social or uh, co-working aspects. Now there's two pieces to this. There's one that's a collaboration room. So right now we're in a solo room, but we can turn this room into a collaboration room by clicking on invite only. So now people that we invite to this room are going to be able to join us in here. We can share our screens so they'll be able to see our screens. We'll be able to see each other's avatars so we can interact with each other. We can interact with the information that's up on the screen and it makes it a fantastic collaboration. We can also open it to anybody. So anybody um, that has me as a friend can see that my room is available and just join me in here at any point if I leave it open like that. And then I can just close it again and that goes back to a solo room. And I can end this meeting. And now we're kind of back where we were before, where it's completely solo. It's not uh, set up for collaboration. Now that's collaboration, but what about just co-working and social? Well, the developers over at Immersed have thought of that too. If we come into the public area, we can see there's these different public rooms. There's Alpine Chalet, Cafe Immersed, which is kind of like a coffee shop. There's a space lounge that it's kind of exactly how it sounds. In fact, let's go ahead and jump in there. So we are in a public room now, so we can hide our screens. And if other people were working in here, which they're not at the moment, we'd be able to see them and we can change seats. So let's go to the center seat here. 
and we'd be able to see other people sitting around and if they're working they would have screens up in front of them now if somebody saw our avatar because the screens are down they would not see an outline of a screen around us and they would assume that we're open for chatting but uh, say we don't want to open ourselves to chatting but we don't want the screens up either. We may be taking the phone call or something like that. We can easily go into do not disturb mode. And what that does is that changes our name tag to red and then sets the chatter in the room. So if people are chatting, it sets that at an extremely low volume. So let me go to another public room and see if I can find an example of that. I'm going to open the menu and let's go to the cafe. There's usually people in there. So there is somebody working over there and you can see that their um, screens are up. So they have the outlines of the monitors in front of them. So we can tell that they have their screens up. And if we bring our screens up, they'll see that we have ours. Now, what happens a lot in here is that you'll hear people chatting and you might join into a conversation. There'll be a little bit of conversation. Then everybody will go back to their work and bring their screens back up. Um, just like in a co-working environment. And it really gives you that sense of presence and that uh, sense of kind of community. It's, it's uh, kind of hard to describe if you haven't done it. So now if people were talking in here and we didn't want to hear them, we could go into do not disturb mode. And then uh, you can see this person is talking to the left of me here, but I can't really hear them. So it's great because you can come into the social working environment and then when you don't want to interact or you need to take a phone call or focus, you can turn on that do not disturb without leaving the social space. But then if you want to go back to your private room, you can just leave the public room, go back to your private room and focus from here. So that is Immersed in a nutshell. There is much more to this application and I'm happy to do a full tutorial on that. If that's something you want to see, just let me know down in the comment section below. But for right now, let's get into some of the pros and cons. And one pro is that this works on Windows, Mac, and Linux, and the agent works great on all three of those operating systems. It's available on multiple headsets, the Quest headsets, those HTC headsets I mentioned, and the Pico 4, and the pass-through, including the keyboard pass-through, and the other portals works on the Quest headsets as well as the Pico 4. It has the keyboard tracking on the Quest headsets. You have complete control for up to five displays and that can be a mix of physical and virtual displays. You can change the size, the position, the resolution, the orientation, just set it up however you want to meet your workflow. I have not seen any other app that has the flexibility uh, Immersed has in that respect. It has built-in support for solo work, collaboration work, as well as the social aspect and that co-working aspect. And the last pro is that there are regular updates for Immersed and the developers are very good about po posting those on the Discord channel. Now, going into the cons, honestly, I haven't really found a lot of cons with this. I would say one is that the performance is sometimes a little bit laggy, not the connection to your remote computer, but the performance inside the headset itself, the application itself. And the lag is not huge. It's not gonna keep you from seeing it, but you'll mostly notice it when you bring up the menu or when you're using the controllers and you have a representation of the controller, you'll see some lag there. So another con, and this is not necessarily the fault of the application, but I have to mention it, is that the feature set is going to be a little bit different depending on the headset you have, like the HTC headsets, I don't believe have the pass-through. The Pico has the pass-through, but not the keyboard tracking. And on the Pico, when you see a meta avatar, it shows up as just a circular coin. It doesn't show as the av actual avatar. So depending on what headset you're using, you may get a little bit different experience, but that's more of a limitation of the platform that the headset is built on than the application itself. 
So that about covers Immersed. Uh, hopefully you liked the second video in this series. Uh, if you didn't watch the first one, I did a similar video on virtual desktop. So I'll have a link down in the description for that. And the next video will be on Meta Workroom. So if this series is something that's interesting to you, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you have any questions on anything I talked about in this video, leave it down in the comment section and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for stopping by.